Hello everyone and welcome back to computer vision lecture series. In this lecture we are going to learn about edge detection and how edge detection is important for feature matching and feature extraction for higher level computer vision tasks. So let's see. In edge detection uh, what we are going to cover is uh, what type of edges exist, what kind of uh, influence does the noise have from the image over the edges and we are going to learn about specific edge detector called Canny edge detector. Canny edge detector is very popular in computer vision literature and uh, if you have taken computer vision class and you don't know about Canny edge detector then it's a uh, it's considered that you don't really know uh, that you have not really taken computer vision uh, lectures. So we are going to dig a bit deeper and go um, procedurally on into uh, look procedurally into how Canny works Canny edge detector works. It, uh, when it was introduced, it was the state of the art uh, for edge detection techniques. Uh, before we go ahead for uh, edge detection, um, let's look at what do we mean by low level and high level computer vision tasks. So uh, computer vision uh, basically works in, in the domain of understanding uh, real world images. Through real world images, we extract information that is relevant for our uh, application. It could be edges, it could be corners, it could be a particular feature and the tools and techniques that you use, uh, they come under computer vision. Uh, the computer vision pipeline has a whole set of uh, steps from sensing to data representation, from uh, ed uh, extraction of edges, uh, corners up to 3D reconstructions. And each of these steps have um, different methods related to them and there are different techniques and state-of-the-art uh, algorithms that you can use for uh, accomplishing each and every of this step. These steps are not exhaustive, however, but as you go from sensing to 3D reconstruction, um, the, the definition of uh, computer vision to be changes from lower level to higher level. The reason being low level tasks are considered as um, the tasks which are very small and uh, require uh, local feature understanding whereas 3D reconstruction uh, is considered high level computer vision task because you are constructing uh, a 3D perspective of your real world through different images and and so starting from sensing until uh, the data representation there, there, there are uh, multitudes of steps uh, involved in between. Uh, before we uh, start to look into uh, what how edges uh, behave and how what they um, what what are the definition of edges we want to see uh, we want to learn about vanishing points and vanishing lines so what is a vanishing point basically uh, you let's consider a ground plane a ground plane is any ground any plane um, in the in the real world when you're taking an image of the real world uh, this is our, your image plane and O is the center, uh, is the camera center. When you capture an image, uh, the lines parallel, uh, the, the lines which are parallel in the ground plane uh, tend to meet at a certain point in your image plane. And this point is considered as vanishing point. Uh, any two parallel lines uh, along this ground plane will have only one vanishing point. That's the property of vanishing point. Another property is the ray originating from the camera center going through this vanishing point is parallel to the uh, uh, pa these parallel lines lying on the ground plane. Um, as you can imagine if you change this ground plane uh, you're, you, you can get a uh, different vanishing points uh, different vanishing points so there can be multiple vanishing point uh, in your image plane. Uh, another aspect is so this is an example of a vanishing point basically uh, if we consider this as our ground plane, there are these rail tracks are all all these four rail tracks um, are parallel lines, and they meet at one point uh, in the image. That is that is the vanishing point. The property is uh, a vanishing point is that it can be used to reconstruct a, a camera or to get cam camera characteristics or and uh, also help us for calibration of uh, camera parameters. Another important aspect is vanishing lines. So what are vanishing lines? Uh, vanishing lines are the same parallel lines that were in the ground plane as we saw before. 
so, uh, uh, my mistake vanishing lines are not those lines um, in the previous uh, image we saw uh, these parallel lines which are present on the ground plane uh, there can be multiple different parallel lines this is an example and these parallel lines would meet at certain point and a line that passes through all these points is called a vanishing line so let's say in the same ground plane you have uh, one set of parallel lines like this and another set of parallel lines like this both of them will meet at two different vanishing points and when you join this um, this forms the horizon line generally called the horizon line or the vanishing line um, uh, before as, as discussed before as I said before this is one example of a ground plane if you shift this ground plane uh, above or below then you you have another uh, plane and for every plane uh, you can define a different vanishing line why is this important we will see in the next slides so let's see let's set back and think on what is the actual goal of uh, edge detection edge detection basically uh, wants to calculate edges anywhere or in the image uh, how do we define edges it's basically visual changes in uh, um, pixel values can be considered high uh, changes in pixel values can be considered as edges which are uh, discontinuous discontinuities in the image uh, why do we care about edges basically uh, by extracting edges we, we can recover viewpoints and uh, subsequently we can recover geometry of the real world and reconstruct that um, geometry in our uh, models and therefore edge detection is important edge detection also helps in higher level vision tasks like recognition uh, image stitching even 3d reconstruction so edge detection is uh, very important uh, this is an example of an image with multiple uh, vanishing points here is a one vanishing point when you extrapolate these lines present in the image you generate one vanishing point here another vanishing point is here and when you draw this line uh, connecting these vanishing points you get a vanishing uh, line another line another um, uh, parallel lines are this and for these lines the vanishing point is at infinity Uh, what could be the origin of edges when you think about edges what go, what are the things um, what are the aspects or the features of the image that we see are um, that forms or that uh, manifests itself into edges um, so there are variety of factors beginning from surface uh, normal discontinuity so this is a cap of this bottle uh, and there is a discontinuity here um, uh, over the surface so we know how the cap looks but because of um, uh, 2D visualization of this image, we are not able to see the whole or uh, the other side of the cap. And this discontinuity can create uh, an edge. Another is a depth discontinuity, also called contour uh, discontinuity. And it is called because of occlusions or, uh, or and and if uh, the objects are uh, separate from one another or occluding one another. Another is the texture or the surface color discontinuity where uh, you have uh, written objects or textures or any kind of patterns and immediately next to it there is nothing or another pattern starts and that this kind of uh, discontinuity are called surface color discontinuity. Um, the last type of discontinuity is uh, illumination discontinuity and these are not exhaustive uh, discontinuities okay uh, uh, there can be multiple different uh, discontinuities these are not exhaustive but these are something uh, some definitions that help us understand uh, what edges how edges are caused and, uh, and therefore we can learn about um, how to extract those edges so if you know the causes uh, it would be easier to extract the edges uh, let's take a closer look uh, at the edges uh, this is an image and these are the three different regions which are um, highlighted here in the leftmost image here we see uh, on the right the, here is the contour discontinuity here is the surface discontinuity and here it's not clearly visible but when you go back to the main image you see that there is a pillar here so this is actually a depth discontinuity when we extract the ed edges from this whole image maybe the edge appears here if this edge is um, if, if the pixel values are uh, um, you know diverse enough that uh, the edge detector is able to detect this edge however 
from human level perception uh, this is considered to be an edge as well another is the con con uh, texture discontinuity here due to the different colors and different texture present on the ground uh, these are the probable cause causes of uh, edges on the uh, right hand side we see another depth discontinuity example here um, so there are a lot of discontinuities even in the same image from occlusion to geometry to contour uh, to depth so um, a lot of different edges are present in uh, almost all kinds of images um, how do we characterize the edges right so we already know what uh, edges mean but how do we uh, characterize them what do we mean by characterization uh, how do we define them in a mathematical form or even in a form that we can handle in, uh, com in our computation um, an edge is a basically um, a place where uh, rapid changes of color values or pixel values occur and if we plot this kind of changes um, uh, such a function is called an intensity function so on the left there is an image and we are plotting the intensity function of this image along this red line and on the uh, middle image is uh, the profile of this uh, intensity values along this line here we don't we, we recognize from the left that there is uh, there are two edges here and here but uh, just because uh, the intensity fell or the intensity increased here um, it's not easy to know whether these are edges or not so what we do we do uh, we take the first derivative of uh, this intensity function and the peaks negative and positive both included uh, gives us the edges that uh, corresponds to the uh, direct directly to this these points in the image Uh, going back to our original uh, example image, uh, if we draw another line here and we uh, plot an intensity function along this line, uh, we get this uh, intensity plot, right? Um, it's easy to see that this fall of intensity uh, starts from here, where there is this dark uh, pixel values, and then for a while it, uh, it remains uh, uh, black and then it jumps to white or when, it, uh, when this line enters this white spot. And then again for this lamp, we see a drop of the pixel values here in this. Uh, another uh, drop is because of the shadow region, um, I think. And because of this door, uh, you get a huge uh, gap of um, intensity fall. So along this line, you, this is the intensity profile. And when we take the first derivative, it is easily uh, observable where the edges are located. Uh, however, the derivative operator is quite sensitive to noise. So when we added a little Gaussian noise to our original input image, uh, if you see it on your screens, it, you will it'll be able to see that there are small dots around in the image, which are um, high frequency uh, noise added to the original image. And when, we, when you take the gradients along this line, uh, the profile um, is corrupted. So this is the profile originally of this image. And then when you add the noise, uh, the profile becomes a bit um, unclear. So what, um, it makes sense to uh, study uh, what kind of effects uh, the noise has on the um, edge detection, uh, on our edge detection. So consider a single line or row of the image as we uh, saw before, and we plot this intensity function along it. Um, uh, and the, uh, the image had the noise uh, added in it and if we take the first derivative this this is how the derivative looks uh, in this inter intensity profile itself you can see that there is a lot of um, changes in intensity here and they are all noise and when we take the first derivative it's not clear where the edge is this is how the noise can affect uh, infect the uh, image and our uh, edge detection process so, uh, so the difference filters, basically the different uh, operators, they strongly respond to noise because they are based on the uh, uh, intensity changes. They are designed to track those intensity changes. So if you add high uh, frequency noise, um, it, um, it, it uh, you know, uh, desecrates or it uh, deteriorates or degrades the uh, edges. So they uh, so these edges uh, stop looking um, different from the neighboring foot pixels uh, and it becomes difficult to differentiate between the noise and the edges 
So if the um, noise is, uh, is higher or in more frequent, uh, frequently present in the image, then it becomes more difficult to extract um, or to separate the noise from the edges. So what can we do about it? Uh, a simple solution is we apply a Gaussian smoothing filter on the image in the beginning and then we apply uh, and then we try to extract the edges. So uh, this is the uh, intensity profile. Uh, we applied a Gaussian filter uh, smoothing filter or, or over this profile uh, through a convolution operator and um, using by using by doing that we created a smoother profile of the uh, of the intensity line and then we when we take the first derivative of this profile uh, we can clearly uh, detect the uh, position of the noise uh, sorry position of the edge so we can clearly say that here is the edge edge is located here. Mm, um, so we can also think um, the derivative operator and uh, convolution convolution to be interchangeable. Both of these operators are uh, um, uh, linear operators and therefore they can be uh, they can uh, we can apply the chain rule and interchange these operations. What uh, is the advantage of doing this is um, computationally it saves us a lot of um, uh, computations basically. So uh, let's say how uh, when we change the sequence of the operations uh, here is our intensity profile and we take the first derivative of our Gaussian um, uh, kernel, Gaussian smoothing kernel uh, the first derivative of the Gaussian smoothing kernel gives a profile something like this and when we convolve this um, differentiated version of the kernel with the original intensity profile we get back the same kind of um, output where it shows the location of the edge it, and it saves us um, operations, number of operations basically. So this is what we saw now Gaussian uh, filter derived with the edge filter uh, basically convolved with the edge filter will give us a profile something uh, which looks like this in two dimension. Uh, an important question th and something to think about is that is this output uh, separable or is it not? Uh, it's a question to you for you to think something um, you can do it mathematically you can also have a 2d um, um, function of a Gaussian uh, convolve it with, with a um, uh, edge detector uh, kind of um, uh, uh, kernel and then uh, see the output and then see if you can separate this it would be interesting so we already have seen that uh, edge detection is influenced by the smoothing operation. Uh, how much does uh, it affect is uh, visible here. So if your uh, Gaussian smoothing uh, kernel is one pixel wide or three pixel wide or seven pixel wide. So this, these are the results of the uh, edge detection after applying um, Gaussian filters with different um, uh, widths. So uh, if the Gaussian filter or the smooth uh, smoothing filter is um, you know very thin and it is of uh, one pixel size then uh, it's easy to extract the finer features or the finer edges whereas if it is uh, of higher pixel width uh, then the edge detection profile uh, then the edge edges uh, detected are at different scales and uh, show us a different profile of the image so depending on the application and uh, the localization basically that you expect out in your edge detection uh, you can use uh, different uh, kinds of Gaussian uh, filters. So in this case the localization of edges is not very good however the profile looks uh, uh, the profile looks good. So depending on the application you can choose one filter over the uh, other. So, what would be the what? How can you how we how can we um, uh, design how can we design uh, an edge detector basically? What what will be the main steps included, or uh, what will be the main things to be considered while designing uh, a very good uh, edge detector? So, the first criteria would be that the edge detector should be able to detect uh, should be very good in detecting edges. It should be able to find all kinds of edges in the image. Um, ignoring the noise and other artifacts present in the image. We saw how noise influences the edge detection process 
So we need to uh, design an edge detector, edge detector which considers noise and still uh, is able to get us uh, very good uh, real edges. Another important part is good localization. So uh, edges can be detected as close as possible to the so uh, localization is basically defined how close is the original uh, detected edge to the true edges and uh, ideally uh, a very good localization is considered when uh, the edge detector has only one pixel for one edge if it has multiple pixel then it uh, and then it starts to lose its uh, localization uh, capability we will see this in the next slides as well and uh, basically the edge detector should function uh, should take the cues of different sources of edge detection uh, edges like uh, differences in color intensity textures so on and so forth even continuity uh, closures uh, and some high level uh, knowledge uh, an example would be this image where we know that there are pillars here so this uh, our edge detector should be able to extract this edge which is not easily visible here however we know uh, as a fact that it is an edge because it's a depth discontinuity. So designing an edge detector really means that we uh, the detector is able to um, get all the real edges um, and then we can choose which, uh, which edges we need for our uh, purposes or for the particular application. Um, the edge detector should also be um, able to find every um, edges which we call edge and but however uh, there is no uh, exhaustive definition of what can be or what cannot be called an edge so we don't really have that um, uh, choice uh, so we really need to see visually and analyze the output of the edge detector to see if the edge detector is satisfying our uh, edge, edge criteria so um, before we do that before we go on and design uh, an edge detector, uh, we need to ask ourselves uh, what we consider edges to be. So for humans, uh, smaller details are not really important. And uh, however, most of the edge detectors the, do not consider this. So here is an example of a, from the Berkeley segmentation database. These are the, on the left you see the original images and the, in the middle you see human level segmentation. So these uh, edges are generated by humans and as you can see that humans tend to not focus on the finer details of the um, uh, image to extract the edges whereas the uh, gradients or the uh, edges present by, uh, detected by the edge detector uh, is able to uh, see different um, smaller edges present in details as well. So there is a bit of a um, uh, decoherence between our understanding of edge and what an edge detector uh, what a current uh, state-of-the-art edge det detector does so again I would say repeat uh, again myself is what your application is about um, that is where it matters most so if you really want all kinds of edges present in, in an image then you can rely on a very good uh, geometric um, geometry based uh, edge detector and you don't have to consider human level understanding of uh, what an edge is however if you are looking for something uh, like uh, in the middle like a human level segmentation then you are uh, then you need some more prior knowledge or a higher level information to add uh, in this edge detection process so that it does it takes uh, it gets rid of the finer edges uh, this is just a basic um, uh, plot of the state of the art methods uh, present in the um, um, uh, not present but um, um, uh, you know uh, in the last uh, 45 years of uh, computer vision uh, the green dot here represent the represents the human level um, performance which has a 0.7 recall and 0.9 uh, precision uh, as you can see then most of the sta uh, state of the art methods are quite below so there is a huge scope of uh, uh, improvement in uh, edge detection also I will repeat again and again is uh, it depends on what your application is and that will define whether you have achieved uh, satisfiable satisfactory uh, edge detection or not so the current state of the edge detection basically is uh, localized so local edge detection works quite well 
um, false there are always false positives from different illumination texture or color gradients which um, are unnecessary or not required and they still appear in the edge detection uh, output uh, some other methods also take into account longer contours, so longer uh, regions they take into consideration. Uh, modern methods which are uh, dependent on data, they actually learn from the data are uh, the new state of the art. However, we are not going to consider this, uh, we are not going to learn about them in this um, lecture. Um, maybe in deep learning you get to learn that or if not, once you finish the deep learning um, course, you will be able to find out related uh, data based uh, edge detection um, projects or research work done and you can uh, look into how specifically they do this edge detection in that. Um, the current state of the edge detection which are not based on data also suffer from poor use of object and high level information as I said it before in the previous slide um, the current edge detection techniques do not consider uh, high level information. So. Uh, I'll just shoot it out to you as that uh, we are going to study Kenny Edge Detector basically which has been a very good uh, state of the art in edge detection technique. It's not uh, as much used these days depending on the application again however um, it's still very uh, popular and very widely applied in a lot of different applications. Um, the theoretical model is easy to understand however is um, uh, not going to be covered in this lecture. We are not going to go into the uh, derivative part of how the Kenny edge detector works. Um, Kenny basically showed how uh, first derivative of Gaussian closely approximates uh, the operator that optimizes the product of signal to noise ratio and localization. Um, think about this statement for a while. We go through the whole process of how the Kenny edge detector is designed. And then we come back to this uh, slide again to see what it means. Okay, so I will repeat again. Kenny showed that first derivative of Gaussian closely approximates the operator that optimizes the product of signal to noise ratio and localization. Signal to noise ratio is basically extracting edges which is important and suppressing simultaneously the noise and a product of a good localization. And how does uh, this product can be optimized is by use of a Gaussian which is uh, the first derivative of the Gaussian and um, yeah that basically resembles uh, what a Kenny edge detector is okay this is just a simple explanation but we come back to it in this uh, later so let's start with a uh, demonstrator image on the left um, there's a color image we take a, a grayscale image on the right and the first step in Kenny edge detector is to find x, uh, find derivatives uh, in x and y direction using uh, of, of the Gaussian. So the x direction Gaussian is this, and the y got it. Um, the derivative of the Gaussian filters are in the x and y direction are shown here. And when we apply these filters along the um, image, we we are able to generate the um, these uh, these gradients. Um, we have enhanced these values by 0.5 just for visualization otherwise it, uh, it would be difficult to view in the screen. Uh, the second step would be to find the magnitudes of these gradients and um, uh, combine them basically each of them. So it's basically a square root of the squares of each uh, of the derivative of the Gaussian in h, x and y direction which uh, generates a gradient magnitude for us. And on the right, we can see the visualization of um, this gradient magnitude. Um, when we take, uh, so what is uh, the, uh, the next step is to compute the gradient orientation. So orientation is basically um, a measure of uh, the gradient in the y direction to the gradient in the x direction. And this is just a color coded, um, uh, color coding of this uh, thresholded uh, magnitude of this uh, gradient orientation and if we don't threshold this uh, you will get image something like this so it's really important on how you uh, uh, threshold and what values you choose for this thresholding for generating this gradient orientation and this is just for vi visualization purpose this is uh, using the threshold is not uh, part of the um, uh, it, it, it is actually part of the Kenny edge detector, detector but it's not um, a tunable parameter if you understand what I mean. 
Um, the third step would be to suppress uh, non-maximum values. Uh, so what, what, what does it mean? So we are basically suppressing for each um, edges. Uh, so if, if there is a thick edge, uh, the gradient direction is basically perpendicular to this edge. This is the gradient direction. And if you go along in this direction, you will see that there are a lot of values along this. Um, earlier, we defined um, that a good edge detector needs to localize well. So what does this non-maximum suppression does is if there are a lot of values along this uh, direction, it takes the maximum of this value and replaces this thick uh, edge with one pixel. For example, in this uh, sparse uh, setting, we have a pixel Q and in its neighbor there are um, P and R values. But we take uh, the value at Q to be the maximum of all these values and we interpolate uh, along the gradient direction so this is the gradient direction in this case and we do it for all the uh, all along the edges this is how this is what is non maximum suppression uh, visually uh, this is what uh, the edges will look like the magnitude gradient magnitude of the edges before we apply non maximum suppression so now think for a moment if we apply non maximum suppression what will happen to these thick edges they will become thinner right and you're right they will become thinner. They will be replaced by single pixels or maybe, um, yeah, they will be replaced by single pixels. So that is what uh, non-maximum suppression does. The next step in, in um, Kenny Edge Detector is hysteresis thresholding. So what we do is uh, we decide two thresholds initially, uh, high and low. Uh, these are manually selected thresholds. And if the gradient magnitude is higher than the higher threshold, then we assured that it's a strong edge. However, if the gradient magnitude is lower than the lower threshold, then it's we consider that to be a noise. The, um, this thresholding is manual and anything, any edge that lies between these two values is a weak edge. So what does uh, hysteresis thresholding does is, uh, this is an example here. Uh, this thick edge is a strong edge here as well. And um, we, we want to connect these two components because um, because of due to noise or due to different factors this this uh, edge edges were um, missing so we basically follow these edges along this along the direction of the strong edge pixels towards uh, uh, and cover the weak edges using the co connected components uh, which we discussed in our filtering uh, lecture and finally we generate after applying this uh, hysteresis thresholding uh, this is how uh, the output of a final KG edge detector, Kenny edge detector looks like. Uh, here we have considered a sigma of uh, square root of uh, square root 2. Sigma is basically the width of the Gaussian filter, the smoothing filter that we applied. T low is the lower thresholding value, value for the hysteresis uh, thresholding and T high is the high value for the hysteresis uh, thresholding. So uh, we want to look again a bit more on, on the effect of the sigma or the Gaussian kernel spread or the size uh, over the um, Kenny edge detector. So this is um, the image uh, edge detection from the previous uh, uh, slide, which used um, Gaussian kernel of size root two. And if you um, pump up this value by four times, multiply it by four times, you will get uh, more sparse uh, edges. So basically, when you apply a Gaussian kernel with a thicker kernel, it will uh, it will it will reduce um, this. Uh, here in this example, we can see in these windows, uh, in these glass panes, uh, there are some uh, vertical lines which should have been considered as edges. Uh, in in the middle image, we are able to extract those edges. However, when the kernel size increases. Uh, it smooths out all these values in this uh, neighborhood and therefore we are, uh, the Kenny edge detector is not able to extract uh, or detect uh, those lines to be edges. So basically what happens is um, if you want to have a higher level or large scale edges, you just increase your Gaussian kernel size. And if you want really finer information or finer feature values, you decrease the uh, Gaussian kernel size. Uh, these are the basic steps that we took until now for designing the Kenny edge detector. 
uh, starting with uh, derivatives in x and y direction taking magnitudes and orientation of gradients and then doing maximum suppression non maximum suppression for um, reducing the thickness of the edges uh, then we do hysteresis thresholding for connecting the weak, weak edges with the uh, strong edges and then we follow those edges using connected components uh, in matlab it's just a simple straightforward function to implement and now we come back we go back to the definition of the uh, uh, of uh, not definition what can he uh, can he sh uh, showed so can he showed that first derivative of gaussian so we saw the first derivative of gaussian how it looks like it's basically is the this is the first derivative of the gaussian it closely approximates the operator that optimizes so in our case uh, the product of no, uh, the signal to noise ratio is uh, is what the edge detection uh, after the non maximum suppression is and the sorry not after just before the non maximum suppression that is the signal to noise ratio depending on how big the kernel size you use this value will depend on that and the localization so localization was achieved by non maximum suppression and hysteresis, uh, hysteresis thresholding um so the whole canny edge detector it uh, resembles this whole operation which is uh, mentioned in this uh, paragraph and that is why uh, that is the uh, that is uh, the definition of um, or the, that is how the canny edge detector basically works um uh, in this lecture we saw the edge detection and in the next we will go ahead a bit uh, one step more and look at how corners look like or how to detect corners basically uh thank you